SRTV take over. Woo! Let's go. Guess what, everybody? We're back with another takeover episode. We are with Liz. What's up, Liz? We are Hi. with Ryan. Yo, what's, what's up, Ryan? up, guys? So we're back with another uh, episode today with the takeover. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just want to make sure that you hit like, subscribe on all this content. Remember that we are walking, crawling. We're getting to a thousand subscribers. When we do, we will be giving out two hundred and fifty dollars to one person yeah cut to him cut to him he's showing there you go 250 dollars to one of our subscribers who has hit like and who has commented on one of these videos so the more likes the more comments you do the better your chances are wanna, of winning uh, we can win this too right if we comment all of them? unfortunately i do have to make the note that if you are part of srtv you cannot win we didn't Dang talk it. about and this a, we didn't talk about this too. on the contract i had it in mind too. you cannot legally you cannot win because you are part even you you're even part you, of production <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> even yeah. even you ruben <laughs> we got ruben with us asking if he if he could win no unfortunately none of the people that work at this podcast channel can uh can win wow so that I'm really sorry, hurt guys. my heart right I'm now i'm very sorry all right i'm very sorry to I probably burst at everybody that has come and comes here to do the show's bubble. <laughs> I don't think our legal made it clear to uh, to them yet. But yeah, you cannot win, but you can at home. You can win. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit like and make sure you subscribe and uh, comment because you could definitely win. Uh, here at The Takeover today, we're going to talk about something that has been very important over the last few years and especially ever since the pandemic. And it's, you'll see it here on your screen that says that housing experts say they're just aren't enough homes in the U.S. And I'm going to read this real quick. Um, here's the sad news. The good news is that Gen Z has big aspirations when it comes to housing. Gen mm -hmm. Z are twice as likely than previous generations to have bought or want to buy a home before the age of 25. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So before I, 25, I Gen Z is twice as likely to want to buy a house before age 25. Mm hmm 97% of Gen Z wants to own a home in the next 10 years. Yeah. Wow. 87% want to make sure that they have that house by age 35. So by the time <laughs> they're 35, they're at least hoping that they will be able to have a house. Now, here's the bad news. The bad news is that Generation C will carry a heavy student loan debt burden, not just student debt, but a lot of debt that comes with today's inflation. I rebuke that. Uh, today, <laughs> newly maintained college graduates have an average of, get this, $40,000 in student loan debt. So the average Generation C that's graduating college, the average is graduating with $40,000 in debt. So that's like... You know, uh, wow, a, a Corolla, like a no, a, no, a Camry, no. that's like that's a like high end a, Camry, that's like a decked out Camry, yeah, yeah, like a super high end Camry or a, a mid size sedan or an uh, or, yeah. or, or, or small SUV in debt, but their salaries get this are not keeping the pace of rising costs in housing. So they come out of college, they have all this debt, but then the salaries that they make are not enough for them to be able to then buy a house because houses now. Uh, and again, you're stressing me out right now. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Like the, this is all new that information. Fast help me. That fast one better help me. Man. Not to make you guys depressed, but the APR today is averaging at close to seven percent every day. It varies uh, depending on where you're at and your credit score. Just by you different. saying seven percent, I'm guessing that's pretty high. I'm guessing that's pretty high. It is pretty high. So get this: a few years ago, before the pandemic, you could get a house, you know, between two and four percent. Mm. So it's almost twice what it used to be. An APR over 30 years, just to kind of put it into perspective for you guys, you could buy a $400,000 home is the average now, right? Which mm -hmm. is very expensive still mm -hmm. because the average used to be, you know, in the 200000 So it's twice what it used to be. A $400,000 house with an FHA mortgage at like 30 years, because you have to pay for this every month for 30 years, you're looking at close to about, at the end, if you pay every single month the same payment, close to about $999,000. So a million dollars. Oh, my God. Wow. So a house that costs 400000 because of the APR and how much you will pay, 
you will end up paying close to about a million dollars at the end of the 30 years for a house that you bought for $400,000. So I've got Ryan and Liz here today. So Liz, what do you think in regards to all of Um, this? First of all, I don't know much about houses. I live with my mom, but my mom loves to look into (laughs) houses. I live with my mom too. I love the transparency. (laughs) No shame. Um, But my mom loves to look into like buying a second home. So to put it into perspective, when I realized that they have gone so high, my mom's down payment to our house was $99. Just $99. Just $99. Yes. And when she was looking into it, now, when the numbers she was telling me, I was like, this is not matching to our first house. Yeah. So to me, it is absolutely crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I will say, though, when you talked about the $40,000 debt, that caught me off guard because at least for me, I look for every single scholarship I can possibly look for. And I mean, like I will, there's billionaires who give free money just for you to write them an essay. So I, in the name of God, I will not be graduating with debt. I'm saying that right now. Mark my words. Let's hit up Elon Musk real quick. <laughs> Let's hit up Elon. Cause no. Ryan, are you trying to buy a house in the next well, by the time you're 35. Yeah, by the time I'm 35? Do you want to have a house? Because oh, here yeah, it says that sure. you guys want to have a house. When I say you guys, your generation wants to have a yeah. house by the time they're 35. Um, I want to have one by like my you know, late 20s. Yeah, okay. me too. Because I want to like focus on, you know how you said uh, the $40,000 student, uh, 40, in student debt? Yeah. I want to focus on my debt first to pay it off as, I'm, as I find a you know, job after all that stuff. Stay with my mom help her pay bills and all that stuff. And then afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and look for houses and look for things that I, obviously I'm going to have to take care of myself. Yeah, the, the, the thing here is that it's um, research shows that it's becoming almost, almost impossible for the middle class to buy a house in today's time. It's, it's a lot simpler for you to rent a house mm-hmm. Because it's, it's, or to rent an apartment is cheaper. Uh, There's also, when you buy a house, take it from me, you have a lot of expenses. Because you, you, you buy the house, but then you have to pay property tax. Mm -hmm. With the light and the water. You have to pay, well, you have to pay light and water with the rental. But with your own house. Do you pay like HOA and all that? Kind of house tends to be a little bit bigger, right? You you buy a house kind of future-proofing yourself a little bit, at least four or five years. But... Then you also have to pay for property mm-hmm. um, insurance for your mortgage. If you have a mortgage, yeah. you have to you have to have that. Um, then you have to pay it. if you live in a community. You have to pay HOA, CDD. Yeah. CDD. Yeah. You have all these different fees. So you know, in today's time, when you look at it, a house, a four hundred thousand dollar house, you're looking close between three and four thousand dollar payment a I month. I feel like I feel like you can probably. I don't know if it's going to be the same or not, but I feel like you can probably buy like an acre land or two acres, something like that. And yeah, well, it depends. Like- yeah, it depends where you. But still, if so, if you, that acre or land is three hundred, you know, four hundred thousand dollars, you're yeah. still looking to pay. You have to pay for that debt. Yeah, it's going to be like close with, to a with, million and when it comes to doing this. Housing. Is for Florida or like all over? No, the the this is nationwide. Oh God. Yeah, this is nationwide. So. My question to you guys is now looking at, at, at this and, and looking at everything that you're, you're seeing in regards to the market for houses, because we all, you know, I think is, 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 is your guys' dream to own a house, correct? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Why initially, and I think it's important people, why, why do you guys, I know why, but why do you guys want to own a house? I think for me, first of all, I want to have a family. So I want to have that set space for my family to feel at home. My mom didn't own a house till we moved to Florida. It was like we were going from house to house, house to house, like family members. And that's normal. Like it tends to be normal, a part of the process. But it, at least for me as a daughter, it was an amazing feeling to have a place to call home. So I want the same thing for my family and for myself too. Ryan. Um, you know, I agree with Liz on that too. I'm very family oriented. So like... You know, it's just me and my mom, but whenever I soon, if God willing, I get married and all that stuff and I have a family, you know, I kind of want that to be the main area Mm -hmm. of obviously where I live and all that stuff and be available to provide for my kids and have a steady home and all that stuff. But I also, it's because, you know, I kind of want to 
I kind of want to dabble in a bit on how life truly works. I kind of want to like go ahead and once I buy a house, I want to learn how to do these certain things. Obviously, I'm going to have them like people are going to tell me I yeah. have knowledge about it, but it's a learning experience. And I also, feel like that's the best thing for it. Yeah. Also, I think when you have the opportunity, like owning several houses is an investment because as things continue to go higher, like you can have an opportunity to sell something or if you buy one and the, the other one pays itself. I know it's not possible for everybody, but like those are goals that you can have at yeah, least at some, some things, point. Some things bring like a return mm-hmm. on investment and ROI. So it would be pretty cool. Yeah. So to, to Generation C, it is, it is important for you guys for as sure. well. Because I oh, mean, yeah. it, for, for the longest, for every, you know, the last 100 years, the American dream is to own it's to own a house, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's to have a house with a white picket fence and <laughs> you can have your kids kind of roll around and you can have, you know, live next to neighbors that you get along with. So you guys, when you look at that, you aspire to that as well. Then, yes. We could yes. Say. Absolutely. Um, now, here's the question. What, what do you guys think is the next steps for you guys to achieve that? To, um. to what What... Because uh, I'll be honest with you, right? One of the things that worked for me, I had, I, I have this friend of mine when I was your guys' age, when I was like 18, 19, and I was getting out of college. And, you know, you start, well, not getting out of college, out of high school, you start going to college. And you start sort of like, you tend to, because you live with mom and dad, money that comes in, money that goes out, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you're sort of a little bit more free spending and you're, you're okay with your checking account number being under $100, <laughs> right? Not me. Sort of, not me, but that's good. But that's good because me back. I in the learned day, the hard way, but because, yes, yeah. Because back when I was at that age, when I was like seventeen, I didn't care how much money I had in the mm-hmm. bank account because I knew that my needs are met for because I live with my parents. Mm-hmm. But I'm, you know, a good friend of mine. He who was older than me at the time. He's still older than me now, but he, he's kind of like a mentor. He said, "Listen, you have to sort of put." You know, I I hate I hate this word like a vision board. You know what? You, you guys know yeah. what that is. Yeah, 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 I do. So he's like, you got to create a vision board. You got to put it up on your basically somewhere that you have to look at it every morning. So whether mm-hmm. it's on your door or whether it's in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, and you have to look at that vision board and you have and you have to have there what you're aspiring to. So you know you put there a house, the car you want, all the things, so that every morning. When you're, you know, going to work or you're going to college or you're going to school, that sort of gets embedded into your mind. Mm-hmm. So you have you have a goal to work for. And that's what worked for me. And I put I want family. I want a house. I want a car, you know, and a lot of those things are sound materialistic. But to be honest, we live in this world. Yeah. And we have to work, you know, we have to work for, for what we want. For what we want. Yeah. yeah. You can't you can't just sit at home and say, oh, I'll wait for things to happen to me. I think. You know, as an entrepreneur, you got to go and get it. Mm-hmm. So if you want something, you got to go and get it. So what would you guys, what, what will you guys be doing to achieve these goals that, that you guys? Uh, of course, I want to go to college. I want to be, you know, I want to do cybersecurity. That's what I want to do. But I also have a passion for, you know, photography and all that stuff. And then, you know, I always done that. Actually, I started not that long ago, actually. And I, I honestly love it. And if that happens, if, if it gets to a point where I actually like start getting good at what I'm doing with, you know, photography and all that stuff. And eventually I'm done with college and stuff. And I manage to pay off my debt with potentially what I get from photography or potentially from whatever I may get um, from fast and stuff. I can go ahead and be able to have a double income, you know, have that part time with being a photographer or if I make more money being a photographer than being a cybersecurity tech, I can go ahead and just do my passion, which in reality, both of them really are. But mainly the safe route is going to college, cybersecurity. That's good. Getting over with. That's good, man. So I'm a micromanager to my life. So um, I'm in college right now and I finished my bachelor's degree in two years. So officially, like that's like the goal. Um, but I started my own business when I was 16, so I have been, I, it was one of my goals to put money aside. I did learn the hard way, because at first it was like, oh, it's money, 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 I'll, it doesn't matter, like, my mom gives me stuff, but I, after a while, like, once I reached, like, my 18s, I definitely did start saving money, so I feel very, I don't want to say comfortable, because 
life can humble me. But I do feel very comfortable and excited for to get it to that point where I can buy a house. Yeah. Because I also, again, like I look for scholarships. Like I refuse to pay for college. Like it's just if oh. I have if I have the opportunity for someone to give me that blessing for me to study for free, I'm going to take it. I'm going to work for it. It's not easy, but I mean, it's the, it's the long run that matters. I think that that's matters. our dream right there is to be like debt free. Yeah. Nowadays it's impossible, but you know, we need to try and like, I think, reach uh, that point. You know? Another thing for me is my mom graduated nursing school debt free. I know she got, she's not that old. Don't let me do her like that. Wow. But wow. Wow. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> So I definitely like I do strive to do that, but I will say like my mom helps me a lot. My mom is like, love her. So yeah. Well, one thing to uh, kind of give it to you guys is it is it is possible. You mm -hmm. know, you guys could do it. That that is the 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 essence of this. The news are going to tell you guys that the number and majority is that Generation C. You know is. You can't buy houses it's almost impossible for them because this 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 and that but let me tell you you guys have the same amount of opportunity that anybody else mm -hmm. before you yeah you just have to obviously you guys are, are younger so you have to go through the same steps that everybody has gone through to get yeah. to that right so most important thing is to have that in your mind to have that vision of what you guys want and to go and work for it that's the most important thing is to have that even if that entrepreneur spirit doesn't have to be attached to you being maybe an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right? Maybe yeah. maybe you want to study to be a doctor, or, or but you have to have that spirit of getting up every day mm -hmm. and going working, Having like if it was for it, yeah. like if it was your own business. Because what happens is nowadays is a lot of Generation C and and some of the younger uh, kids nowadays they they'll start a job and, and if they don't it. like it. Yeah. After one day, they will quit. And it's true. I'm, I'm not generalizing, but this is facts. This is numbers mm -hmm. that are out there for everybody to go and see. And I know people. I know 16, 17-year-olds have had like 20 jobs. Yeah. And, and our parents, and, and, and our parents what, they, what did they used to do? They used to go and work at a job. Maybe they hated it. You mm -hmm. know, they, they didn't like doing it, but they knew that they, the end, uh, they, they were looking for for to meet something mm -hmm. else at the other yeah. end of that. So the only way for they understood something that I think we have to learn from them is we have to work towards what yeah. we want in the future. Yeah. So maybe where you're at right now is not where you see yourself ending at, up at, but in the transition, you have to do your best there because you just never know who you'll meet, what will happen mm -hmm. where you're at. So I think also, sorry. Um, as like a young person, I tend to compare myself to adults that have already gone through everything that I've been through yeah. or that I'm going through. So I think as like young people, we have to realize like they went through what we went through sometimes even harder because they came from places that we didn't come to. So having that long term goal, like that long term vision is really important. It is. It is key, Ryan, for you guys to essentially, you know not give up on the fact that hey man i can do it yeah there's mm -hmm. always there's always a finish line at the end of the race so and it's important for you at home to ensure that uh if you're watching this you encourage your kids if you have kids that are young if you have kids that are just starting their career paths they're going to college that you sort of sit with them and say hey like although the news and the media outlets are telling you you cannot do it it's impossible you have you have you have to be the one to to voice that and inspire them mm -hmm. into them so they know because if if they're getting that from the media and then your mom and dad are at home like you can't do it i know you can't yeah. you know eventually they'll start believing it mm -hmm. and and that's not the truth uh i think most important thing is that our kids especially i know my kids when they grow up i'm going to be the type of person to to give them my life lessons mm -hmm. yeah and hey say hey you know you're going to make your own mistakes here's the mistakes i made Here's what you can do. Here's the things that I did with my credit I shouldn't have done. You know, and, and here's what I bought that I shouldn't have bought. Like those things are, are I think, important for parents to understand for that sure. you guys can help your kids out a lot yeah. by doing that. Every mm -hmm. generation and why we've seen growth in why we have cars that are far better than we do 100 years ago is because the engineers have what developed mm -hmm. year by year. Yeah. So I think the same way. Why is it that we can't? 
as a society do the same thing and yeah. get better year by year like we can our next generations help raise them to be better than we were mm -hmm. because then they'll do the same with their kids and when we yeah. look down the line our grandkids will be far you know i know you guys not even married i'm talking here about <laughs> grandkids but um <laughs> super important super important sure. that um and and that's the reason we brought today's topic so Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you, you to Liz. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to Ryan for another SRTV takeover. SRTV Thank you to Ruben takeover. for being here with us. Uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe on this content. Make sure you hit comment. Comment down below. Hit like on this video. $250 to one Two, five, subscriber. $250 to one subscriber once we hit what? 1,000 subscribers. 1,000. One hey, we're more than 10% of the way already there. Thank you to everybody. Mark's officially, we've been doing this for a month. So Woo! we just basically started. So little by little. And props to you because you've been consistent. Yeah, you've like, been, It's like every day, it's every a, yeah, week. It's a, it's 7 a.m. sharp. Like, he's not missing. Well, production is doing a lot of good work <laughs> with that. Uh, I'm, I'm just here just doing our work, bringing... Good content for you guys for uh, family-oriented content that you can enjoy, you could laugh, you can have different variety. So thank you to everybody for watching. We will be back soon with another SRTV takeover. Make sure you stay connected. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, everybody. Woo!